In this tutorial, we're going to finish off the bottle of the pill bottle model here, and we're going to add the threads around the neck so that the cap can screw onto it. Turns out this is a really fantastic tutorial for polygon modeling, just using all kinds of tools and techniques to get those threads in place. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the model that we're working with, and we're going to come down to the modifier for subdivision surfaces, and we want to turn off the use limit surface function that will cause problems downstream if we don't disable that. If we look at this from the front view, we have the next section right here, and we can see that we've got a couple of rows here. But right now it's subdivided, so I'm going to turn off subdivision by just setting the levels down to zero. And we have 16 segments going around the perimeter, and we're going to need more resolution for the next segment, but we're going to derive it from this. So what I want to do is I want to come over to the body geometry right here and I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it so that we have a duplicate and I'm going to call that neck and I'm going to hide the original. Okay, so let's press the tab key here. I want to switch to face mode and we're going to double click this. Now this loop right here is planar to this loop along the z-axis, so we're going to take advantage of that. But for right now, this is all the geometry that we need for the neck. So we're going to come up to Select, and we're going to do Invert, and we're just going to delete these faces. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the cap temporarily so that we can see how large that is relative to the cap because it's going to be sitting inside of the cap. But I'm going to press the Tab key here. Let's go into X-ray mode. And in vertex display, I'm going to select those top vertices right there. We're going to just increase that height so it's about like that. Okay, so that's all I needed the cap geometry for. Now the next thing that we need to sort of understand here is where our object's pivot point is. And it's right down there. So I'm going to come back up to object here. And I'm going to do a set origin. Actually, it's origin, not pivot. We're going to do origin to geometry. That's important that it be right there. So I'm actually going to come over here now. I'm going to press Shift S, and we're going to do cursor to selected. That'll sync those two things right there. Okay, now we're ready to add a little bit of resolution to this. It's too crude for what we need it to do. So let's come down here and let's look at our subdivision levels back to 1. And I still think that's a little bit too crude, so I'm going to set this to a value of 2. Now, as soon as we're done with that, I'm going to press the Tab key, and I want to actually bake that geometry in. So we're going to come over here and we're going to apply that, so that that is now the geometry that we're actively working on. If I press the Tab key, you can see that right there. If I bring back up the body geometry, Let's come over here and look at this. They're mismatched. However, as soon as we turn the subdivision back on for the body, then they match up as far as the number of segments going around the perimeter. And that's important. So we can work on this one at a different resolution than this, but as long as they're derived from the same mesh, then you can have different levels of subdivision and they'll still match up. I'm going to come back in here. Let's look at this in the front view so we can see what's happening. I want to take this single vertex right there. When I rotate around, I want to move that out. You can grab the pivot right here, or you can just press the G key, and then we're going to move along the Y axis. So just press Y. And there we go. So that's all we need to start producing the coiling effect that's going to go around. Now, I need to generate some full 3D geometry from that, so in Edge Mode, I'm going to select both of those, and I'm going to press the Period key, and I'm going to move that pivot over to Active Element, and that's going to help me right here because I want to extrude these two edges. So I'm going to press the E key, but I want to move them just along the Y direction, so I'm going to press Y, and you can see that what's easy about this is as soon as I'm done, I can just grab this if I want to fine tune it, as opposed to it being off screen. Press the S key 
I want to scale along just the Y axis, so Y key. And as soon as I start moving, press the zero key and that will just set the percentage to zero, which is the same as flattening it. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here now and isolate this and this. Let's do a select invert, press the X key. We're gonna remove all of those. So we're left with just this profile. We need to remove this edge in the middle. So I'm gonna select that, bring up the context menu, and we're going to do a dissolve edges. But you need to disable this dissolve vertices because we want that to be there, that's critical. Okay, so I'm gonna press the tab key to leave edit mode. And everything is still in the center. The origin is still where it needs to be, and so that's correct. So the next thing that we need to do is determine the size for this object, the vertical height here. That's actually very important. So under dimensions, we're gonna come over and we're gonna copy that. And then we can come over to the modifier stack and we're gonna add a screw modifier to it. Now we need to match the number of segments up. So we're gonna to come to 64, which gives us plenty of resolution right there. And on the screw value, we come up here and we type in the actual value that we just copied for the height Ta-da, and there it goes. Okay, so let's actually do a value of two. And there we go. So let's go ahead and flatten this. That's produced the geometry that we need, so we're just going to apply that. And let's look at this in the front view. I actually think that I want to scale it down a little bit, so I'm gonna press the S key and then the Z key just to scale that down a little bit like that. So we can bring up the, the cap bottle and you can just see it relative to the cap. And in fact, we can bring the body back now and we can look at it relative to the body. Okay, so we need to come over here now. I'm gonna press the tab key and we need to remove this geometry that that was derived from. So face mode, I'm gonna double click here and then press the X key and we're gonna delete that. Okay, so now what we need to do is just start forming this. So I'm gonna enter into polygon edit mode up here, and we need to remove some of the excessive amounts of geometry that it's generated. So in face mode, I'm gonna double click, hold the shift key, double click again, X key to delete those faces, and then these internal ones, X key, we're gonna remove those also. Now. Another very important detail right here is let's switch over to vertex mode. I'm going to press the A key to select everything, bring up the context menu, and we need to run this through the merge vertices function, and we're going to do it by distance. And it's going to find, you'll see at the very bottom, it'll say removed 65 vertices, those that it merged together. Okay, so now we're going to really get into the fun part of all of this. What I'm going to do on the top so I'm going to double click one of the edges right there and I'm going to hold the shift key down and deselect these edges right there. And then I'm going to come over here to the extrude region function. But by default, it's going to try and look at a normal value for all of those and I don't want that to happen. So we're going to drop over to tool right here and we're going to switch the mode to a standard X, Y, and Z, and we want this to go along the X axis, and then we're gonna scale it. Now you're gonna note that it's gonna go right to and align itself to the active element of all the selected elements. And that's not quite what I want, so I'm gonna press the period key, and I'm just going to go to bounding box center, and let's look at this in the front view, and I can start scaling that. And then we'll just type in a value of zero right there. In fact, I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Double click a single edge on the bottom. Hold the shift key to deselect those. And in this case, we're just going to press the E key and then the Z key to extrude down just along 
the z direction. Okay, now I want to flatten these down so that they're matching up exactly to the body's top edge. And so the way we do that, easy way, is to come leave polygon edit mode for the threads, come down to the body. We're going to jump into edit mode for it temporarily. I'm going to switch over to vertex mode and I'm going to select one vertex, press shift and S, and we're going to do cursor to selected. Okay, tab key to leave edit mode. We're going to come back here, tab key. These are still selected, but I want the pivot to be right there now. So let's look at this in front view. I'm going to press the period key, and now we're going to say we want the pivot to be at the 3D cursor, and then I can press the S key, operate only along the Z axis, and then press the zero key. And that means it's scaling it to zero along that axis. Click. And there they go. Okay, so now we need to come in here and we need to patch these open ends together. I'm going to come into the front view here. This is going to be a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to select the two faces that we're going to be basically operating on, so you can see those right there. And I'm going to press the K key, and I'm going to create a cut right here, and I'm going to press the X key to go just along the X axis until I get to the other side. Hit return, tap the K key again, and I want to come down to the center of this edge, so I'm going to press the Shift key, click, hold the Shift key again, and click there, hit return. So now what we can do is we can come over here in edge mode, and I can select these three edges, and these three edges, bring up the context menu, bridge those edge loops. Okay, so let's do the same thing right here. I'm not going to worry about going into front view. I'm going to press the K key, and I'm going to come over here. I can actually be a little bit sloppy with this, so I don't need to be super precise. Click, hit return, K, shift in the middle, and click. Come over here, select these edges here, and these edges here, and then bridge those together. Okay, so there we go. So we've gotten the basic form and shape. From here, it's just a matter of adding a bit of detail to it. Okay, and now for the detail fun parts. Let's add some detail here by, in edge mode, I'm gonna double click the top part here, so we get the peak of our thread. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to deselect the two end points. And then we're going to come over here to the bevel tool. I want to make sure it's in two segments and the shape is one. But I, in this case, I'm going to switch to active tool because that will allow me to simply grab any edge and then pull to produce the bevel. Okay. Now we need to come in here and start anchoring this. So what I want to do now is I'm going to select these two edges. In fact, let's come in here. I'm going to switch over into a shaded view so that this is a little bit easier to see. I'm going to dissolve these edges and make sure that dissolve vertices is selected right here. We're going to do the same thing down here. In fact, maybe this isn't easier. <laughs> Let me switch back over. Dissolve edges. And then at the top, what we're going to do is we need to figure out how to anchor these. So I'm going to press the K key, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to terminate those loops right there. Press the return key. Okay, let's do the same thing down here, K. Now, we're going to double click on one of the troughs and do the same thing. Hold the shift key to deselect these. Hold the shift key to deselect these. We're still in the bevel tool. Click, hold, and drag. And something about like that should work. Okay, I'm going to select these two edges. Dissolve. 
these two edges here and dissolve edges. So let's focus on the top because that'll tell us what to do at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to press the K key here and I'm going to take this and anchor it here and then come right back up to that, hit return, and then press the K key again. And we're going to take this one and anchor it there. K key again. Come right there. So you can see how in all of these quads that we've going, got going on, we're going to end up having to anchor these to triangles at a certain point right there. So that's, it'll work. Okay, so let's do the same thing down here. Okay. And final one right there. And then here, we've got to figure out what to do with these. So I'm going to press the K key here. I'm going to go from here to here. And then the K key here, I'm going to go from here to here to anchor those. And that's how you terminate those. So let's do the same thing at the bottom here really quick. So you kind of get an overview of how all those loops just end up terminating at a particular location. Okay, K key. I'm going to take this loop there. Now let me just show you, if you're on a mouse like me, you could just also right click to start a new right click and then return. So that's another way of doing that. So we're almost done, believe it or not, we're almost done. Now what I want to do is I want to come to the top and I'm going to double click around this open area right here. And I'm going to press the E key and I want to extrude just along the Z axis up a little bit. And then we're going to bring up the context menu and we're going to do a new face from edges operation. We're going to inset these. Now I'm in active tools, so I can just click anywhere to pull inward a little ways. And then the E key only along the Z axis. I'm going to pull that one down quite a ways and then press the X key to delete that face. I'm going to double click on both of these top edges we're going to use the bevel tool again, click, hold, and drag to produce some constraining geometry there. Now this internal one, we've got a very thin row of polygons against the long row of polygons. And when we subdivide them, it's going to pull subdivided polygons way down in here. I'm going to press Shift and D, and then I'm going to mouse left to right. And I just want to make sure that this value ends up being a value of 1. And that will prevent that from happening. So let's turn on subdivision for this and take a look at it. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to add a subdivision modifier. I'm going to set this to a value of 2 so we can see this pretty well. Tab key. There we go. There's our thread. Now, in this particular case, we see a line right here, and that's just a display thing. It won't actually show, but when we come back over here and we look at this, we need to make sure that we have the same number of subdivisions. I'm going to turn off optimal display. And so you can see here, if I set this up to a value of 4, then we've got exactly matching vertices. Now. The truth is you really could probably get away with having this one be a little bit lower. You probably would not see that at render time. As an example, I could come over here and just go into ray tracing mode. And there you go. Even though there's technically a value of one difference in the subdivision surfaces, they're so close that, you know, it matches up.